Over to you, Jalen. Again, my name is Jalen. I'm the director of engagement at the Bazelon Center. I'm also the founder of Count Us In, the first and only BIPOC disability-led voting and civic engagement organization in Indiana. For a quick image description, I'm a Black and Japanese person, so I have lighter um, skin. I have long braids on, and I'm wearing a red suit jacket and a black dress. And I'm like, I can only echo y'all. I'm really excited to be here. I get fueled up being with fellow Black disabled folk. So I identify with the disability community through my experiences with a mental health disability, as well as chronic compartment syndrome, which causes numbness and severe pain in my legs. I used to be a junior Olympian and a collegiate track athlete, but the pain was just too much where I not only retire, I um, cannot walk long distances anymore without um, numbness and pain. Um, so I developed this, some disabilities later in life and some I like mental health I've navigated my entire life. And just to kind of give background before I share my personal experience, Black people with disabilities, especially mental health disabilities, are not only at the high risk of arrest, incarceration, and fatal harm by law enforcement, but are just subject to racial discrimination and mental health settings when we try to get help, as well as in accommodation settings in the workplace and in schools. One in 20 law enforcement encounters involve people with mental health disabilities, and generally Black people with disabilities experience a 53% chance of being arrested by the age of 28. I'm personally a survivor of mental health institutions and an unfortunate police response to my mental health crisis. It's going beyond training police officers on disability and mental health, but creating new systems. And I can attest that community-based, um, non-carceral, home-like settings like a peer-led respite or even just a Black peer-led phone line could have given me the space to not only authentically speak about what I was going through and some of my moments where I struggle, but also just have a space to heal that wasn't carceral or involuntary that are led for and by us to keep us, you know, keep the world accessible and keep us out of harm. And when I experienced a police response to my mental health struggle as a college student that was going through a developing disability at that time, more inclusive accommodations for both my mental health and my legs um, would have enabled me to get the support I needed instead of powering through and suffering in silence. And as many Black women, especially Black disabled women, understand how heavy it is to wear that mask to be superwoman and how heavy that mask is to carry to constantly fight and stay resilient in navigating systems that weren't designed for us and the push for change often in spaces that don't look like us and I just wanted to applaud this administration and thank you all again for for bringing us together because um, for our nation to truly reach the goal of an accessible and a more equitable world it requires us to have these conversations together, um, especially people in leadership and us as emerging leaders. I'm, I'm really honored about that. And I hope today that as a law student as well, that's working hard to join the ranks of just 3% of attorneys who identify as disabled and mere 5% of attorneys that identify as Black, I hope to also be able to contribute to the conversation and um, help build the world that we need. So thank you. Thanks.